this is, this is, this is. Mike Ireland, man, it's been a minute. Thanks for, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Dude. Thanks for having me, dude. Uh, a lot to talk about. Music and bars, though. How does that just work so well together? Like, <laughs> I, I, I kind of fell into it. Yeah. Um, through not touring because Avalanche was touring so much okay. um, right off the bat, right when we started. I and the Avalanche started touring heavy. And, and uh, when we had a lull in touring, I started bartending at a, a bar called Dexy's in, in New York, in uh, East Harlem. And I just kind of started learning the, the tricks of the trade from so that. You, and and you, you, you just started as a bartender, like from scratch? I started bar backing. Wow, okay, yeah. that's, got, that's, yeah, that's cool, Started man. bar backing. It was actually a, a local, my sister's local bar. Yeah. In so, Harlem, and she got me a gig. So for people that don't know, you play guitar, sing, uh, your new band, Pass Away. We'll talk all about it, new record, all yeah. that. But, yeah. um, you know, I met you when we were touring with I Am The Avalanche. And you got, you know, <laughs> it makes sense to me that you became a bar owner and started started working in the bar scene. But, um, you know, you guys were hard partying. You guys <laughs> were so ask, much why, fun. Why does it make sense? <laughs> yeah, that's why. <laughs> but, uh you know, I remember when we toured with you guys uh, in England, um, the first night we met, we we were drinking, and by the end of the night, I was eating a bowl of cereal with some scotch whiskey or Jack Daniels. It was whiskey. I think it was, it was Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels, Daniel. yeah. I was like, <laughs> oh, and had a good time doing it. Loved it. <laughs> that was one of my first impressions of you, uh, like – I had known, obviously, I'm a big fan, but I, I didn't know you as a person yet. Sure, sure. And I was just like, I was like, this fucking dude is going to be the best guy to ever tour with. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good time. It was fun. Oh, my God. I'm still hungover. That was like 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. I think that's probably why I, uh, I get, like, these days, like, certain things, I get hungover, like, all day. I, I remember... I played this show, this was probably 10 years ago, but I played this show locally, like a local like bar, hired me to do this um, this like microbrew kind of place and, and uh, it was outdoors and I played the show and then I drank a couple of their IPAs, which were great, they were amazing. And then the next day, like they were so strong, they're like probably 9%, whatever. I'm not used to drinking 9% beer. I'm like a lager guy, a pale ale guy, you know, yeah, yeah. and if it's an IPA, I pay attention nowadays. So this is my first mm -hmm. sort of like for it, foyer into it or whatever, right? And so the next day, I, w I told my friend Jason, my dentist, by the way, <laughs> you gotta you gotta keep it up for the dentist, you know. So I told him I would help him move, and I was like, I woke up puking, hungover, mm -hmm. headache. I'm like, there's no way I can do this, and <laughs> I dragged my ass over there. He, he lived down the street from me. He wasn't too far. I'm like, and to this, you know, and I, I even was like, I helped him. And I was like, hey, hold on a second. I went around back and I puked in the bushes, <laughs> came back. I mean, he knew I was hung over, but he, he probably didn't know I puked. Uh, he probably did, to be honest. But <laughs> it's so classic because, I mean, to this day, I get a good, nice family discount from him. And I wonder if it's because I helped him move. So yeah. <laughs> a little life lesson. But um yeah, hungover, you know, I mean, we had a good time. Uh, that tour was amazing. But uh, here we are. You you guys, when you started, let's go back into how you got into doing bars, and then we'll get into yeah. the new music. The new music is really good, by the way. I really Thank enjoy you. the record. So, Thanks, But uh, the bar thing is kind of fun, because I actually thought about maybe someday I'll start a bar, and then each time mm -hmm. I had something else to do. But I imagine that you've always kind of had that in your mind. I never thought I'd do a bar. No? In my, ever in my life. Never. Did you ever think you'd even work in a bar, like as a bartender? I've, I'd worked in restaurants a lot growing up. But when I moved to New York, um, it was the last thing I'd ever, ever thought I'd do. Um, <clears throat> my first job in New York was in Times Square, working at the Quicksilver store. Like wow. folding, folding 
quick like Roxy shirts. Yeah. So that's and like then, being in a busy mall, like just constant people. It was absolutely insane. And I remember when we signed our first, when Avalanche signed our first deal, I got a check that blew my mind. Looking back at it now, it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't a lot of money. I think it was like $2,000. And I was like, I fucking quit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's amazing. That's, and that's, I quit. <laughs> I quit oh my God. And I was like, oh, this is the most money I've ever fucking seen. So I quit that job and I actually lied my way into a bartending job in Soho in the city. And uh, they're like, you ever bartend? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. So that was my first gig, this place called Sui. And the owner actually walked out during one of my shifts and never came back. Um, but yeah, that was my first Whoa. bartending gig. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, but uh, no, I never thought I'd own a place ever. Never. Yeah. I mean, Let's go back to that two thousand dollars because I mean that that's something that's like hard for kids to have is perspective on what you should sell yourself for and you know that reminds me of of when when we put out our first record on Tooth and Nail, poking at you, um, it did really well for them and they're like we got something here like we got something you know we were just in, we were literally in high school when the record came out so we're just going to school every day still uh, maybe Fridays we'd take off to go to do shows but. Uh, the owner, Brandon, came back over to my mom's house. I remember this. He walks in. He's like, I want to re-sign you guys. And he brings the contract. And we're like, we are signed. And he's like, yeah, but I want to do, like, you know, a three-record deal instead of, like, a one-record, you know, that kind of thing. I was like, oh, great. Mm -hmm. And he hands us a wad, a stack of cash. And we're Damn. like, we grab it. And he actually, we go to grab it, and he throws it in the air. And so, no. like, there's... And then we realized, well, we didn't even, we realized they're all $1 bills or $2, they're $2 <laughs> bills. So he went to the bank and got a bunch of $2 bills because they don't really hand those out regularly, right? And so, but you'd be thinking, oh, right now. But at the time, we were stoked. We were like, this guy's throwing around $2 bills? What? <laughs> <laughs> like, this dude's a gangster. I know. I mean, it, it, it worked. It worked because we didn't have that perspective. We're like these little bumpkins, you know, country bumpkin mm -hmm. kids from the suburbs that, yeah. you know, let's go. You know, obviously, I'm grateful for the opportunity. It's gotten me this far in life, you know. Yeah, for sure. Here, here I am. But the perspective thing. So so back to that $2,000, you're thinking, I'm good to go from now on. I'm, the, I, I'm on easy street. Let's go. My, we <laughs> fucking blew it. <laughs> <laughs> so fast. Of course. So fast. I think the only thing band really, I, I went and bought an amp. And it was this this place called Main Dragon in Brooklyn. Um, I went and bought, I still have the amp. I still, it's still my main amp. I bought it in, I think, 2003 or 2004. And I bought a Marshall 900 and a, and a cabinet. And I think it was like, back then, I think I, I paid like maybe 900 bucks or something. 800 bucks and the rest of it was spent on on weed and beer there you go for sure <laughs> all things that need to be bought at some point so what <laughs> and like pizza you know just like i was 21 or 22 and that's, yeah. what, I, that's what i was like i am just fucking rich <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean that's the thing is like we didn't even think of it that way we we honest like i remember just just being able to like, let's just try and see if we can tour and see if this can be a career. I wasn't even thinking paying bills because I didn't have bills to pay, honestly. Like, yeah, I hadn't entered my mind yet. Like, if I had stricter parents, they probably would have been like, yeah, maybe after college, like go to mm -hmm. college, try it out. And then maybe like tour on the side like you're doing with school now. But no, they were like, OK. Yeah. Very naive. Sorry, mom. We Sorry, dad. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, when when Avalanche got you know we we signed, I was already on my own. I lived in Brooklyn. I was in a we all lived together, and it's in this it was like a punk house, and there were so many people the whole living, band. the whole band, um, and a few other guys, and like our drummer's ex girlfriend lived there, and um, the place actually burned down. But I, I think my rent was three hundred and sixty bucks. What year was this? 
2004. Okay. So so yeah. m- movie life had already sort of been on hiatus with Vinny, and that's why you guys started I Am the Avalanche. I don't really – I haven't asked him. He's been on the podcast, but I haven't asked him that. But Yeah, exactly. Um, movie life broke up, and, okay. uh, and he, he, he put Avalanche together. Um, he, he went out searching for all the greatest musicians on earth, and he put us all together. And he couldn't find him, so he found you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's supposed to end. I love it. No, but you guys are a great band. I mean, you guys are powerful. You're mighty. Your, your fans yeah. really have your back, and you guys have your fans back. I love that about you. Yeah. Brothers. Brothers. Yeah, uh, we are. We are. Man, the, the, the last record you guys put out, Dive, was great. It Thank was you. classic Thank avalanche. I mean, that's what you want, right? You want it to sound like new, but the best thing that – in their in the vein of the band that you love you know yeah. and i feel like that was that that was it you know it was we good. had the greatest time making that record it was so much fun rat produced it engineered it yeah um he does all our records now he's amazing um he's come a long way i mean he's he's oh, been man. doing it over for years now every day or whatever you know he's he's, he's mastered his craft yeah and it, it, it's amazing at what he does I'll have to have him on it on the pod too. At some point. That would be, he'd be awesome. Yeah, he'd be awesome guest for sure. Well, let's talk about Pass Away, the new the new so, band. You know, you have a record out. You have a new record coming. Uh, it's coming out November twenty sixth. So this podcast yeah. is coming out. Actually, it's out. So it's coming out. This, this podcast is going to come out the 29th, Actually, so uh, go check it out. <laughs> uh, the record's called Thirty Nine. And I haven't heard the whole record. I've heard a couple songs on it, and mm-hmm. it, it sounds great to me. Um, and then I went back and checked out your your first album. Is it called uh, Brooklyn or something about Brooklyn? It's called The Hell I've Always Seen. Oh, The Hell I've Always Seen. Okay, there's a couple yeah. songs. That's our first full length, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Dude, I mean, I was really impressed. Really impressed. Thank you. Uh, Thank the you. style is right along with, with what I feel like you do, you know? Yeah. Uh, the lyrics are great. So tell me a little bit about, you know, what Pass Away does. How did you come up with Pass Away? And, and it's like, is the idea that you guys are like a melancholy kind of punk, kind of sad punk or what, what's the deal with that? You know, the way I've always written songs is just from straight up misery, a miserable place. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> when you're happy, you want to so, be out celebrating, not right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> It's it's hard, man. You know, it's it's hard for me to. I gotta dig deep if I'm if I'm happy. I gotta dig real deep to to write songs. But pass away. Um, the name came from Kellen. You remember Kellen from Avalanche, bass player? Yeah. Oh yeah. So he he pass away was it, it was him and I. It was kind of our our brainchild together. Um, and he came up with the name. Um, he's no longer playing with us. He had he had a baby a long time. Oh. Well, a few years ago and had to leave the band and he moved moved away but uh now he's got two kids um sounds like he's passed away but no he's just somewhere (laughs) else (laughs) he's doing great good 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 to hear he's always a good dude he's golfing and just kellen rules man he's living a new life yeah yeah but anyway so he came up up the name um there was a punk house right across the street from my house in brooklyn called suburbia and it was a, the best place ever. Named after the movie Suburbia, the punk movie. Yes, but it was it was. There were like ten guys living there. They had amazing. They had a great stage. They had shows that like a couple weekends out of the month. And the guy who built the whole thing, um, who is now in Crime and Stereo as well, um, we kind of recruited him to play drums. And we had a whole plan at the first practice. So, and Kellen and I, we were like, dude, if he sucks at drums, I'm going to start throwing up. <laughs> just so you <laughs> don't we'll have just, to tell him. And we'll just say, we got to go, dude. Mike's really sick. But he ended up being great, um, even better now. So that's how we form. And um, it started as like an excuse to party. An excuse to like band practice for us was like getting away and drinking beer and laughing. Yeah. And just jamming and that's that's pass away it it was just my fun like avalanche is super fun don't get me wrong but this was like my uh opportunity to use my voice 
and yeah um my weird dark humor so well, I like hearing you sing. I like hearing your voice on there. I, I didn't when I first heard the couple songs. I didn't know who the singer was, and I was like, I'm gonna look and see. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I looked. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah, it's it's Mike. Okay, cool. I can I can feel yeah. that. Like, there's, I, you know, obviously not knowing how much input you have on some of the Avalanche stuff. I can hear that there's there's got to be some input there, you know. So, uh, based on what the songs that you guys are writing with Pass Away. Um, but yeah, I, I like the style. I like that you do something different. Like you, like even even some of the there was a song I can't remember the name of the song, but you sing kind of real low and raspy, but it sounds different. Like the tone, and it sounds different than anything I've kind of on, honestly heard. I was like, dude, that's that's badass. But it's not like that it. the whole time. It's like there's full singing and and uh, yeah. So let's get into you know how did it how did these songs develop because. I mean, is it just you write songs, you get together with the guys, and you have your party time and your beers? Um, because that's basically what MXPX does. But we're obviously, we're obviously pretty business oriented too. Like, let's get something done. Yeah, now, you had to have somewhat switch, you know, made that switch to get this Absolutely. album, you know, these albums done because they're really well done. I would write the song, um, you know, I, when it first started, I'd, I'd have a whole song. I'd come to, to practice with, with lyrics and a song, and then we would just, we would just build it from there um but then the, there's those nights you know i'm sure you guys happen too where the juices are flowing and you're just jamming and you come up with cool shit and then you rack your brain for the next month trying to write lyrics over what you guys did so a lot of the songs on our new record 39 are like that you know just like we had a lot of these songs recorded before uh the pandemic happened and i moved to new orleans for a year which is a whole other story. Wow. But I sat on these a lot of these songs for a while and I was able to to kind of live with them. Yeah, I mean that that's the thing is like I, I feel you as a songwriter, you come up with certain parts that you're like, okay, this is a special part. Like this is a good part. Yeah. This has to be the lyrics have to match the the quality of this part. You know, we get to, almost too into it, right? As, mm -hmm. I think as a songwriter, you should. You should be into everything you're writing, um, at least while you're writing it. Um, and so, yeah, that is that is a struggle. But it's actually kind of fun. I, I enjoy the challenge of having a really good part and meeting that challenge with some really, like a really good lyric or something. But that is that is hard. I mean, there there's a I can I can think of I th I call it. This isn't going to describe at all, but I, for some reason I call it like '50s punk idea, and yeah. I had this idea for like a couple years, and I keep trying to write it, and it just it'll I'll turn what I write into a whole new song and leave that part because it's just not right, and I'm just like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna make this happen? So like that's my Moby Dick, right? We'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. So I mean, I, I feel uh, can continue with with the process and and I, you know, <clears throat> I kind of picture someone else singing when no. I write. Do you really? Yes. So like uh, you're and writing and you're like, I'm not gonna have to sing this, so I'm just gonna exactly. do whatever, right? Exactly. And the way you know, with Avalanche, Vinny and I write together a lot, and I, I always write for him mm -hmm. to sing over. So for Pass Away whatever the vibe of the song is, like say say it's like, sounds like Jawbreaker, which like a lot of our songs sound like Jawbreaker. Um, I'll picture him singing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> or yeah. I'll picture Blake, you know? Or if it sounds like Not A Surf, I'll picture, picture Matthew singing, you know, things like that, or Rancid or something. And I don't picture, I don't, I sing it in my head like they would. Um, I like that. That's an, I haven't, I haven't really heard that. It's yet. weird. Yeah, but, but that's cool. But, but it gives me, I second guess myself so much to where I'm like, if, if I go through my garage band on my computer, all the songs are unfinished. There's like half songs, like hundreds and doing this new kind of with lyrics or mainly like progressions with like melodies and like, ha like a couple lyrics. Yeah. I mean, all, half songs, Shit. you know, like yeah. fully like, and then I just abandon them because I lose confidence in myself as sure. a songwriter. So, this exercise kind of helps me. It kind of helps me get a song done, you know. 
yeah, whatever it takes, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, but but somehow with Passaway, it ends up original. It ends up sounding like nothing else. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, man, that's that's kind of just the way I do it now. That's cool. That, yeah. I like that. Yeah. I mean, how does it feel? I mean, obviously, I guess it feels good, but but um, have you played shows with Passaway? Have you guys done many? But so yeah. you've done okay. I didn't, yeah. I didn't go back and look at YouTube or whatever, but, yeah. um, I mean, how does that feel being in the front guy? Is it different than, than, um, than being in avalanche and, and hanging back? Absolutely different. Um, do you like it? A- do you, do you get nervous, more nervous, less? Yes and no. With avalanche, I, I just, I have the best job in the world. I play rhythm guitar and I'm the avalanche and it is the shit. I just, yeah. I lay, <laughs> I lay back and I just rip, you know, and like it, I play big chords and it's just like, the best job. Pass Away is different because, first of all, some of these songs are really hard for me to sing because they're about heavy shit. And then playing guitar and singing at the same time has always been a challenge. Um, but I do get heavy stage fright for Pass Away for sure. You're much more in your head, obviously. If you have to, you have to figure, you have to deal with the crowd more. You have to remember lyrics. You have to sing the notes. I, I know, like you're saying, if there's if there's a song that's hard you have to put all of your concentration into hitting those notes. And oh, yeah. if you think about something else, all of a sudden your notes are going to be sloppy. It's like a weird thing. It's like, it's like flying a plane where you're like, if you just move a little, it goes like this. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're not going to crash, but it's going to move. You know, you're going to feel it. That's, yeah. that's a trip. We just played uh pass away. Just played fest in, in Gainesville last weekend. Mm-hmm. And it was, How, was so it, awesome. How was it, it was so awesome for us. Yeah, it was. It was our first one, and it was amazing. But you know how fest work, man. You just like you get on stage. You don't have time for shit. You have to go, 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 go. So I couldn't hear anything. I couldn't hear shit. So thankfully, people were singing the words back to us, and that <laughs> that was like I was like, yes, thank God. Like, oh, I just have so much respect for singers now. You know, like so so much more respect for for you guys because it's hard. It's a hard business. But you still turn your guitar up, right? Way too loud. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you know, if you do it after a while, you just figure out what works for you as a singer. And and I remember being blown away. Uh, Mike Ness from Social D, he was telling, um, he was he was sound check. I was watching him sound check, and he was like, "All right, I want everything. I want my guitar really loud. I want no no none of my vocals." He he like doesn't use vocals and this might have changed by now this is years and years ago and my stuff's totally changed but at the time he was just singing out there with no vocal he was hearing it in his head like his head voice Mm -hmm. and i guess it kind of works with social d because you pretty much you know there's only about three notes per song you know so you know but i was like i was blown away and i'm like i bet he does that because he never got monitors growing up and so he's like used to that and he's like, fuck mm-hmm. it, I'm just gonna keep this rolling. And, yeah. uh, and I think it's a good idea, you know, especially if you're playing crazy, crazy situations in, in punk bands touring around, most times the monitors are not the best for yeah. vocals, for vocals. You're not gonna hear anything. Yeah. <laughs> Drummers the same way. Drummers, you know, you grow up in the punk scene, you pretty much have to know the song, visual cues half the time yeah. like your monitor is gonna go out it's gonna be like distorted vocal or whatever you know mm-hmm. that's just part of the job right it's part yeah, of the, the punk brand mm-hmm. <laughs> i love it i wouldn't puts, change a thing puts a smile on your face i see you know i'm, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm smiling just talking about this shit you know i love it's, it so it's, much it's yeah it makes my eyes water when i get super happy yeah so they're watering I, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I get the same way we're doing some shows next year. Our first couple are uh, yes. April first and second, so we're finally we're gonna kick back into gear, and then we'll where, continue to do shows. Where's that happening? Year, but uh, we're gonna do West Coast. We're doing um, Anaheim, California, and the, and then April second, um, Phoenix, Arizona. So awesome. yeah, just doing a, a weekend to try it out. We don't want to like blow it out. So uh, yeah, yeah, awesome. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for awesome. sure. Awesome. Awesome. We're doing a little weekend next. December uh, next next month, we're playing right two shows. We're playing two shows with Lagwagon in New York. And I'm super nervous for that. Tell everybody about it. We're we're uh, we're playing Warsaw in Brooklyn on the 18th, 
and I think they're playing double platinum. Oh, and yes, that's that mm -hmm. And then the next night we're playing Irving Plaza in Manhattan. Right I on. I think that they're doing Blaze that night, but I could be wrong. But yeah, Passaway is doing those. That's right on. Awesome. That'll be great. Yeah. Too. Yeah, Lagway and their great band, love them. We've toured with them a bunch, and Joey and, and crew, always cool. Um, yeah, I mean, things are, you know, things were coming back, you know, earlier this year. But I feel like 2022, it's just going to be, maybe not business as usual, but it's just going to be even more. You know, it's just as, as we get through it, we'll just, that's the way life is. You know, you have to yeah. put on your boots, your waders, mm -hmm. and wade into that water one step at a time and and deal with whatever it is in front of you. If there's nothing, you just keep going. But Yeah. My first show back from the pandemic um, was heavy, dude. It was like... I couldn't believe it. I blacked out, not from alcohol, not from anything else, but like on stage, I just like, we played the set. It was fun. Pass away played. Yeah. We opened for our teenage bottle rocket in uh, Norfolk, Virginia at a Norfolk tap house. And I got on stage and I couldn't believe it. So you passed out from excitement? I didn't pass out. I just, <laughs> I fucking don't remember playing. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I was scared. I was like, man, I don't remember how to do this, you know? Right. And, and, and it just, we spent the whole, and the pandemic's still happening, but I mean, we spent that whole time when, the, when we couldn't play dreaming about playing. Yeah. And like scared that maybe we won't be able to again. So getting on stage for the first time when it was okay to was so surreal for me. And I, I, I absolutely cried for sure. Wow. That's wild. I mean, I, I, I've thought about it, but I haven't really thought about it. Like if it'll affect me differently to, to play the first show. But um, what do you do? Men, do you do you sit down mentally and like think about things before a show at all? Like I know that there's a lot of warm ups people do, which I try to do as well, like stretch out, push ups. You know, just get your blood pumping, get ready to jump around. But do you have any anything else? Do you just think about things at all? I usually by the time. Pass away goes on. I'm finishing a beer at either the bar or in the dressing room, um, and just laughing with my friends. Like I don't have any sort of pre-show ritual. I don't like do vocal warm-ups. I I just I hang out until it's time. You know. Yeah. I feel like if if I do go off and like try to go out to the parking lot or something, and, or go out to the van and try to meditate, then I would get too much in my own head and start right, getting right. lyrics. And, you know, right. I, I, liked, I like to go on stage happy and stoked. Like, just, I was just drinking at the bar with, like, my best friend, now I'm going to play. You know, that's how I like to do things. That's that's a thing. That's, I mean, that's awesome. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. Like getting, getting like, in the right wait. headspace to go and be in front of a bunch of people that are also really happy, right? Yeah. I yeah. don't mind waiting through the crowd to get to the stage from the bar. I don't. I think it's I don't care. That's bad. You know, very, it's like, very rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. Like people are like, no, nah, man, we got to like go like side stage. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Like yeah. we're going to play either way. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I like think to, that's cool. I like to hang out. I like to, to get into the groove with, with my friends first, you know, e even if it's at a bar down the street. Sure. I just, sure. I just like to pregame. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I, I, you know, I think that's important for sure. Whatever that is for, you know, for you as an artist. Yeah. Like we have like warm up songs that we put on a playlist, uh, you mm -hmm. know, which doesn't always ha you know, doesn't always happen if you're like at a festival, if you're, well, usually, you know, it depends on the festival, but th when we were touring in a bus all the time, we would obviously always be together and we just put on the music there. But like, we'd have a couple songs uh, that would always play. And that, when I hear these songs to this day, it makes me think we're about to go on stage, you know. Which, which, what's the gets one? You, it gets you kind of hyped. Um, Coma Girl by Joe Strummer. Awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, you know, just obviously it's about being at a show, you know, a festival, and just that, and just the feelings that I get when I hear it, and we just get pumped. Um, you know, for the crowd, you know, out out for our, our crowd playlist. I think one of the songs is, um, well, is uh, Boys Are Back in Town. My Thin Lizzy, you know, yeah. so like things like that always get me hyped. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 
I love that. That's awesome. And man. that's similar to like being at the bar with your friends, getting hyped, going. Yeah. For it. Yeah. So, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the future's looking, looking good, looking bright. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't want to get into too much crazy, too much peripheral. I want to talk mm -hmm. about more of what, what pass away sort of does. So like if somebody's coming to see you guys live, you guys are a three piece. We are, we actually, we've been a three piece the entire time, but, uh, we're, we just added, we haven't played a show with him yet, but we just added John Markson, who is a legend. He produced our, our record. He produced 39 and engineered okay. it. He plays, uh, he plays in such gold. You remember such gold? We yes. played shows together. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Uh, I've hung with those guys a couple of times and he's they in were little kids called... then though. I'm sure they're yes. like grown men now. Avalanche, MXPX, and Such Gold played two shows together: The yeah. Truck and and I think Best Buy Theater. In yes. Square. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, did you know them is... then? Yes. You he already did. knew them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, John's amazing, and he uh, he's a fucking awesome producer too. Um, but yeah, he's gonna play guitar live with awesome. us. Awesome. Awesome. Which is awesome because he played a lot of uh, he ripped a lot of stuff on our record on guitar. So. Um, we're stoked to have them, but yeah, we've been a three piece up until now. Now you're, you're entering into it. I mean, I was listening to the record and, or the, the songs you guys, the recordings, whether it was your new single Oreo or your not new single, I guess by now the record's out, but, um, Oreo great. Mm -hmm. Sounded great. Um, Thanks. but it was like, yeah, as a three piece, obviously this is going to sound different, but now you have John. So yeah, that, that yeah. answers all those questions. It's going to be full. That's, I mean, that's really yeah. why MXPX is, you know, has a fourth guitar player on stage. It's just because all these songs, all these parts, it just sounds so much bigger and full with another we guitar it. player. We fought it for years. Yeah. We were so happy about being a three. We were like, fuck, we don't need anyone else, you know? But now it's like our songs are progressing into this other kind of world. And that's it. Yeah. And John's our boy, you know, we like, I want to play with him. So yeah, that's great. I mean, yeah. three piece, man. I mean, it's classic. It's, it's strong, it's so powerful, but I mean, when it comes down to it, if you can, if you can financially afford to have one extra person with you, the benefits I think are so enormous. Not only the sound, let's even go with like day-to-day -day stuff, an extra person to, to check in luggage. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you know, just sure. simple things like that, having, having that going. I mean, we're, we're in the middle of trying to um, redo our flyout rig. You know, and that's sort of like we're like, OK, we need to we have our old fly out rig, but we want to go full in ears, full everything kind of like all in one and, and including amps and everything. So it's kind of a little task, but, we, you know, we already started on it. And all these things are so much logistically you have to think about to be in a band that's going to be flying around the country, playing shows, traveling and yeah. uh, as restrictions get tighter and, and, you know, the amount of weight gets less and less it's it's a crazy crazy experience but you know i guess i don't need a math degree to figure it out <laughs> no <laughs> it's Dude, we played fest last weekend avalanche and pass away played i didn't i was trying to cut corners man and and i don't like to fly with a bunch of stuff i put my pedals in my backpack like uh, with it, you know like yeah. old school yeah like i have a nice pedal board with a case and like i was like fuck it i you know, I have a layover. I don't even feel like it. So I just put them all in, a, in my backpack, like like, it, like I was a little kid and thought I would be cool to play like that. And halfway through the first song, my pedals are just everywhere on the stage. Like oh my one's God. over here, one's over here. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. So lesson learned. Yeah. I mean, I tried all that kind of stuff, you know, just how can I get away with less and less and less? And it mm -hmm. works sometimes, but yeah. The, 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 I'm surprised you didn't get stopped through security because that's the thing where I usually. Oh, I did. I did you? Sure. Yeah. Well, oh, I time. have. What is it? Uh, uh, the fast pass or whatever the pre. You know. Whatever. I have that too. It's been they so long since I've flown. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> TSA pre check. Yes, pre check. So yeah. I have that, and I still, even though they're just like put leave your computer all that, I still will pull out my bass pedal. I have like a little bass pedal board with a DI and in my. Uh, wireless thing and they're like looking at this like what is this i'm like it's a wireless pedal yeah All right. but i always pull it out so that they don't flag me so things yeah. like that you kind of you kind of learn but i don't know that's uh 
you know, if I don't, if I don't tour again, all that knowledge is useful or useless. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. I mean, the world is opening. The world is going to be needing some punk rock. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so you think of, think of yourself as Santa and get your, get your sleigh ready. Oh yeah. I'm ready for sure. <laughs> <laughs> as ready as I can be, man. Avalanche. Here we come. Pass away. Yeah. Here we come. So, <laughs> So Passaway is kind of full time now, and Avalanche is on the back burner for you guys. I know Vinny's doing all no. the solo stuff, or is it back and forth? It's back and forth, man. I mean, Avalanche is. We just did. Uh, we just did three shows a couple weeks ago. Um, we did Boston, Asbury Park, and, and Brooklyn. They were all amazing. Um, we're gonna do some West Coast shows in 2022, and uh, yeah, I mean, whatever comes at me, I'm, sure. I'm gonna think. You know, we'll figure it out. But. Yeah. Yeah. I they're mean, both, they're, they're both equal. That's cool. Yeah, that's good. I mean, you know, me being in Goldfinger as a bass player, that sometimes gets a little squirrely, depending on what MXPX is doing. But um, I could see, I could see seeing being a little easier going from your band to your other band rather than. I guess Goldfinger is my band now, but yeah. to be honest, I don't really have those songs super stuck in my head i mean the, the staples i i can probably pick up and do no problem but there's songs where i like have to relearn like i got so fucking go? pumped when i heard you sing that bridge and that uh uh the new the newest goldfinger record oh, i think yeah. it's the very first song i was driving from new orleans to uh virginia beach with like a 15 foot moving truck with all my shit in it <laughs> and, like I put the new Goldfinger on. I was like, I heard you, and I was like, Fuck yes, dude! Like it's just the sickest, you know, hearing you and that singing that, you know, have your own parts and stuff. It's awesome. Yeah, I was pretty stoked on that. Yeah, John yeah. really, John really let us let us write a bunch of sh uh, stuff for it. But I, uh, yeah, I, I was just blown away, and and I'm really glad it's the first song. That was a cool first song. Um, one of my favorite songs on the record, actually. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but, <laughs> but I know it goes. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, dude, man, that so is sick. so dope. When Are you Char nervous in the studio doing that? Like doing Goldfinger? Does it make you like? No, not in the studio. No. Yeah. Um, when I've been in the studio with John, he he literally has auto tune on. Yeah. The vocal <laughs> while you're singing, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't normally use, but. Uh, uh, I've always wondered about that. So him. yeah, so I'm not really nah. And then and then most of those, honestly, most of the new record, most of the new record was recorded um, by myself. I just recorded it here, or some in Waco, some in Texas, and some here. Um, yeah. And so because he would he would be writing, he wrote that record over a couple months, three or four months, and once he started, he was just he would send me an idea, send all all of us ideas, and he'd be like, hey, can you can you write a second verse for this? Can you write a bridge for this. So he would do that for like four or five, six songs. And I think I ended up on maybe four of them, five of them. Um, and then two of those songs didn't make the record, but, uh, yeah, it was just, it was really cool because I was, I don't know what I was, I was doing other things like promo stuff, podcasting, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I wasn't writing, uh, my own songs at the time. So it kind of like, didn't conflict anything. Like I could just focus on, writing uh the 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 parts but man i'm just thinking about it i would sit in the back come up with like two lines four lines i would like write john hey what was your first car <laughs> he, would, he would tell me it was like a bug or something like that um and they're like all right all right my first car was better and then i'd go back to it. <laughs> and i put you know i wrote like you know the name of the car into the song which that song didn't actually make the record i don't think but or actually no no no. there was a few a few times where i actually had to rewrite he would ask me to rewrite lyrics he'd be like hey i think you can write something better yeah which is like oh wow i'm glad that he feels comfortable asking me to Has anyone it. ever told you, said that to you before in your life? Uh, Has yes. Anyone told you to? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Like a, a producer along the way. Some, my sometimes? business partner. My business partner actually, Tom Tachilla. He he helps produce the MXPX records, and so he'll he'll tell me that he'll be like, wow. Yeah, this part maybe like write a better part. You know, like I really like this song, except for this one bit, or it could be better. That, I need that in my life, dude. For sure. I think we all I do. It. I think uh, it helps me because I've rewritten a few just a verse or this or that. 
and it's made the whole song just notched up. Okay, this is actually making the record, whereas this is going to sit in a demo pile forever, you know? So mm -hmm. I want that feedback because um, I constantly I constantly make things better just through rewrites. So yeah, yeah, when John said that, I, you know, Tom Chinchilla also actually uh, manages Goldfinger, so he probably tells John the same thing yeah. <laughs> and, and told him, hey, if, you could do if, better. Mike, if Mike writes anything that you, you want redone, just ask him to do it over. He'll do it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's all communication, yeah. and I'm very, I'm not you're, very sensitive. You're not the kind of guy that's going to be like, what? You don't, you know, like, I'm not going to, re it's genius. I'm not going to redo it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think there was a little M MGK uh, story oh about goodness. that. I don't know the details, but do you know? It doesn't surprise me. No, I don't, <laughs> but I'm not shocked. <laughs> Him and Corey Taylor. Corey Taylor was going to do a, a spot on his record from that's Slipknot. Right. And he did something, and they didn't like it, or it wasn't strong, or whatever. But honestly, they could, he could have just tried something else. There's there's ways to to figure it out. But the bigger you you get, the more ego, and the more I don't know. Honestly, a lot of these feuds are probably fake. Uh, absolutely. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> I say oh, probably, definitely. but yeah. a lot of them are. <laughs> a lot of them are. I mean, there's hurt feelings, I'm sure. But yeah. But it's it's all good publicity for all these people. Yeah. So <laughs> you should write a song <laughs> called Fake Feud. Fake. That's pretty good. It's not bad. I, I wonder who I, I would feud with. I don't think anybody. <laughs> well, that's know. why it's got to be fake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll have someone set. I'll set how, many, how many times has, has Drake and Ye, Kanye, or is it Ye, Ye? Uh, I think it's Ye. They've had, yeah. they've had so many feud arguments back and forth, and then they keep, like, Ye will, like, recently Ye came out with a video saying like, all right, let's bury the hatchet. I want you to come to this event that I'm going to do in LA on this date, December, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be the biggest thing ever if you come and join me. And it's just like, no wonder they're doing these feuds. And then if they come back together, uh, so many people will show up. It's marketing people. It's marketing so. <laughs> fake feud. Oh my God. That's good. I think that fits with, I think Pass Away, it would, it would, like, you guys have cool song titles, and, Thanks, and man. yeah, it, it works. But anyway, <laughs> it's just, uh, who knows what's going on? Who knows what's going on? So 2022, you guys are going to be touring more and more and more, and coming, coming out yeah. west. Um, Definitely. Yeah, the new Pass Away is coming out this month. It'll be out by the time this is. Yeah, it'll be out by the time this podcast comes out, because we're recording a little earlier. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I'm stoked, man. I'm, I'm excited for you. Uh, we just put out a live album called um, Southbound to San Antonio. And it was our last, our very last show of when, before the pandemic hit. It was, oh. it was a leap year. So 2020 was a leap year. So February 29th, 30th, whatever, don't exist normally. But mm -hmm. in 2020, it was a leap year, so it did. So that's when the show was recorded wow. on a day that doesn't exist. Yeah, and, uh, it's it's Getting out everywhere, happen. but that's awesome. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so I mean, we're we're excited too. But uh, I'm definitely gonna gonna spin the record heavily, and uh, it, it's just awesome. it's good vibes. I like it. Thank you, thanks. It's definitely our most ambitious. You know, um, we the first the first few releases are just you could tell we were just having so much fun, and we we had a lot of fun on this one too, but. We went pretty deep on this, and, and um, it's it's by far my most personal pass away record for sure. I mean, it's it's like it's pretty heavy subject matter. Do you want to get into it, or do you just want to let the yeah. song speak? I mean, yeah, sure. It kind of sums up the last like six or seven years of my life. Um, the ups, the downs, the, the ups, the and low, downs. low lows. Oh yeah, big time. Um, it's it's not a concept record, but. Um, it's, it's extremely personal in the way that, um, those that know me that are close to me will, will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so like the first song is called Chick's Beach and that's where I live now. That's, I, I've moved back to my hometown, mm -hmm. um, with my wife and my baby and we're kind of on like a, I, I like to call it a layover. Like, sure. a two, I'm, like we're on like a two year layover here, you know, and then we're going to move on. But um, it's just 
Are you saying that bringing back, coming back to your like hometown brought up a lot of memories? Oh that, yeah. Yeah. Big, big time, big time. Yeah. And when I, we came back in uh, December of last year and then passed away, we finished recording in February. Like I went back up to New York and I, we finished. And in those two months from being in Virginia beach, I rewrote a bunch of stuff and wrote two new songs. One of them is Chick's Beach, and the other one's called Bushwick, which is where I lived for 20 years. Brooklyn, yeah. So, um, yeah, um, it's it's heavy uh, subject matter for sure. And it's not just like, you know, we have songs on our old records about being hungover. <laughs> you know, right, like, right. like, fuck, I need a cigarette. I'm, I'm just like dying. I'm, I need like, I can't wait to go out again, you know, like, yeah, fun, you're getting the shakes. Shit. Yeah, yeah. it's visceral. Fun. It's visceral and fun and slightly depressing if you th- overthink it. Yeah. Because <clears throat> you're like, okay, these guys are going to crash. Mm-hmm. Uh, but don't think about that while you're listening. Think about right. the good times. And then here you are. You can't make another record like that. You have to You have to grow. You have to move on. And that's, that's why you have to go through this heavy shit, right? I would say 39. First of all, it's called 39 because it's the last record in my 30s. Um, I turned 40 a week after this, a, a week after the record came out. Wow. So wow. It's, it's called 39. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> By the time this is out, I'll be 40. Yeah. Ah. Scorpios. But, uh, it's, it's the whole record to me, the vibe of it is a hangover. I mean, it's like the, the, like the feeling you get of being like, oh my God, like reflection um, mm-hmm. it's absolutely a, a reflection, but it's also like, there's a little bit of shame and, um, a little bit of a glimmer of hope as well. So <clears throat> you have to have the glimmer of hope. Absolutely. Yeah. Or else there's nothing. Yeah. So yeah, man. Um, 39, that's very Adele. I know, you know, <laughs> and also very Taylor. Taylor, right? She does similar things, but it, yeah. it it makes perfect sense. I knew exactly what it meant to call your record thirty nine, just knowing your mm-hmm. average age. It's like, okay, yeah, this is going to be a statement about you know the last ten years, probably, you know, and what's yeah. happened. A lot changes in your thirties, a lot. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, I packed it in, man. I really did. I got it in in my thirties, big time. Um, you know, <laughs> two bars. Uh, and and it, you couldn't do it in any other time of your life, probably, you know? No, I, I, you know, I met, I met Jade, you know, like the love of my life, which is like, she came out of nowhere, you know, and it's like, that was mind blowing. And then the baby was just like another, holy shit. So. <laughs> wow. So were you writing up until, so did you finish writing before your wife got pregnant? Or were you no. still writing when you were I was like, oh, I'm going to have a family and like, whoa. I was still writing. Um, That's got to be a crazy thing to, to like have that on your mind. And even in the back of your mind while you're writing is is everything's going to change because I'm going to have a kid. I mean, no matter right. what it is. I mean, I'm not saying people should or shouldn't have kids. But like when you have a kid, if you're part of that kid's life, it changes your, your whole life in some ways, you know. Everything has changed. The way I see the world uh, the way I feel in the morning, um, just the way I take care of myself has changed, you know, mm-hmm. um, everything, everything. Wow. It's, 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 uh, it's heavy. Well, can you, can you name like maybe one of the biggest things that has changed? I'm fucking like... exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> that will pass. You're in the baby um, cave, my friend. No, uh... um, I, I am less. <laughs> I, I don't want to die anymore when you want to live. You have a, a bright light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's like, I'm still, I still get bummed. I still get like, you know, part, postpartum depression is fucking real. It's real for, for both, for both parents. Um, so we both experienced that, but, um, now it's just like every day is, I feel like, uh, a new adventure and, and so awesome. It, and it's, it's, uh, Sounds really lame for, you know, I would have, you know, I never thought I'd have a kid ever in a million years. So hearing me say, the, just hearing myself say this stuff is kind of wild, but it's, uh, I have hope every day, mm-hmm. every single day I see this, this baby. I'm just like, oh my God. 
So yeah. a renewed sense of hope, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, I, I was talking to John Bunch, RIP. Uh, he was the, mm -hmm. the uh, anyway. Sense but, field. Yeah, yeah, sense of failed. So, or, sorry. Sense field. Sense field. Uh, <laughs> you know, anyway, I was I was hanging with him in Europe, and it it was after he had taken a really long hiatus uh away from touring and he told me it was, it was just because he had a son and he didn't want to miss it and i was like whoa and i'm like I literally have kids at home and i'm just like <laughs> you know just like it really like hit me pretty hard i've never missed anything i've never felt like that when we even last weekend we played uh you know when we played fest in, in florida i was gone for three days Right. And I, there was a longing I felt in me that I've never felt before. Yeah. It's Just like a, I missed my kid so much. It was crazy. I'm like, I feel like I'm missing out, even though it's only three days. Yeah. This is this podcast is getting a little long. You're probably starting to feel it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the reason I mentioned that story about John is uh, he he really made a good point. He's like, once my kid grew up a bit, um, he was on to different things and then I decided, okay, now it's, now I can go and tour again and, and really spend time away. And that just made me go, you know what? I'm just not going to take what I, how I spend my time for granted while my kids are young. I'm going to really, really be stingy with how much I tour and who I, you know, where I go and what I do. And, and that's for my kids and that's for my yeah. family. And, um, and I'm still gone plenty, you know, I'm gone quite a bit, but I just don't, I don't stretch it out anymore. I try to make it real short, yeah. um, you know, because they hate it when I leave for practice. Of course. You know, I'm of not course. coming back before dinner because I'm mm -hmm. going to be gone all night. They hate that. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, just. But that's who you are, man. That's who you are. You know, it's it's punk and and playing music and expressing yourself is part of you. And you can't, you know, if you if I stopped touring and I stopped doing bands and stuff, I wouldn't be me. Right. Absolutely. I wouldn't be me. Yeah. And then my kid wouldn't fucking know me, you know? <laughs> yeah. She would know like a, this shell of the, of the dude, you know? So that balance is, is for sure. It has to be healthy, You're but gonna... I'll never stop. I'll never stop doing it, but I will, I will make sure, you know, you have to balance it out. Absolutely. You're going to love this, but when your kid gets older, uh, she or he, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a girl. girl. Yeah. She's going to yeah. say, uh, <laughs> My daddy's a rock star to all her yeah. friends. <laughs> and I always try to tell my kid, like, nah, don't say that. You know, like, don't. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. not really a rock star. Because, like, when they ask who is it, it's not Eddie Vedder or something. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, it, it does mean a lot. Because, like, you, you mean so much to your kids. You know, they, you are everything. That's all they know. And you are yeah. the most. You are. Every dad is a rock star. Every mom is a rock star. Maybe oh my not god! Every yeah. single, but my face, my <laughs> wife is the biggest rock star. Yeah, yeah. I can't. Wow, yeah, amazing mom. It right sounds it sounds like you you got a lot of great things going. I'm I'm really happy for you. I mean, thanks. We I, can talk about New Orleans another day because that's probably for sure. That's a cool boy. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, a crazy way to end. We won't end there, but um, okay. I I love hearing that 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 you know you have this record that's out. It's amazing. Uh, and then you put out probably your best thing yet, which is your daughter, right? Yes. So <laughs> your best release. My best release. Yeah. <laughs> you dropped your best release yet. Yeah, man. <laughs> I love yeah. it. All right. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything Dude. else you want to let people know? Let people know where to follow you or find you online before we go? Yeah, you guys can follow me on Instagram. It's uh, Mike Ireland 138 Just the, uh, Mike Ireland and then the number is 138 on Instagram. Um, follow Passaway, Passaway NYC. And yeah, man, thanks for having me. This was awesome. I could talk to you for hours. We'll do it again. Let me know. Hell yeah, man. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Appreciate it, Mike. Thanks, Mike. See you soon, buddy. Yep. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye.